What happens when our institutions of faith fail us or crumble right in front of our face? Welcome to another episode of Ring Them Bells. I'm excited to introduce a former professor of mine, Anthony Abel from Clearwater Christian College. I graduated in 2007 from this college and it was so formative in my faith. It's a beautiful school and has brought so many blessings to my life and so many other students. It was located right on Tampa Bay in Clearwater, Florida. Anthony Abel was not only a professor there, but before its closure in 2015, he was a provost and the heartbeat of this college campus. The Bible department was one of its strengths and was something that drew me into getting a Bible major and helped me through my formation of faith even into this very day. This episode is about what happens when institutions like this fail or crumble right in front of our face. In 2015, the school decided to shut down and so many people were shocked. The closure was blamed on financial troubles, but no clear answer was ever given. This episode gives a teacher's perspective of what happens when a school or institution like this fails and crumbles right in front of you. What happens with the struggle of learning to adjust with what next? I thank God for Clearwater Christian College. I would not be the man I am today without it. But it's important that we don't sweep the dirt underneath the rug and understand that sometimes these institutions can fail us. Let's join Anthony Abel and myself as we explore what happens when a college like this closes and how ultimately we can see the grace of God through these trying moments in our lives. Come have a seat. We'd love for you to join us. And we are live after a little technical difficulties. Thanks for bearing with yes, me. Here we man. go. We figured it out, but we MacGyvered it, right? That's exactly right. We didn't even need duct tape. <laughs> and I have some just in case. Um, so I got Anthony Abel here with me, a former professor, current friend, and and uh, I would I would call biblical guidance counselor still in my life. Um Anthony, why don't you tell the folks, where are we right now? I like that starting the show, because we could be anywhere in the world in America today. Where are we? That is right. We are at Brooker Creek Preserve, I guess is what we call it. So a, it's beautiful. A, a hidden gem. Have you ever been back here before? I have never been back here, and I drove the long way around. <laughs> Not your instructions, just to kind of see what was going on back in here. And how'd it look? What'd you think? Uh, it's pretty remote, and it's pretty awesome. Yeah, so yeah. E- even back here... Well, uh, um, even back here as you pull in, this is the parking lot that we're in right now. There's all these really cool trails and science centers. So this yeah. is kind of a promotion for Brooker Creek Preserve. Yeah, um, it's very a, similar to Starkey. Yeah. Starkey Wilderness Park. Yeah, yeah this is a little bit, I, it's like you said, more remote. You feel like yeah. you're like back in like real Florida. I, yeah. I love it. So every time since I thought of meeting with you, for just whatever reason, this was... Brooker Creek was the play. This was the spot, man. Okay. All right. I like it. So thank you for coming in with me uh, to give a little context. Anthony, like I said, is a former professor of mine from Clearwater Christian College. Uh, He taught me everything from biblical introduction to Old Testament, uh, cults. um, Let's think of some other fun classes that we had together. Just so much uh, that that you were there for me. But then also, you know, um, outside of class, meeting at church or just for coffee or or anything like that. You have always been just a bright light in my life, and I'm so thankful to be able to share that with the rest of the world. (laughs) Well, I appreciate it. I mean, Clearwater was some very fun fun and uh, enriching times for me, too, So with the students. So students taught me as much as uh, I taught them, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, we're glad to have you here. We're going to get, get rolling. Uh, and one more time, just so I can keep that microphone like, and even if it just, just right, right there, there, that work because it's, go. I, you got a beautiful voice. I want the world to hear it. Please. So let's do it. Um, so first thing uh, I wanted to talk about with you is that you were such a great influence for me for the Old Testament. Mm. Uh, Andy Stanley is a, a mega church pastor in Atlanta, and yep. he's quoted as saying that, uh, you know, in in modern Christianity that we need to unhitch ourselves from the Old Testament. Mm. Okay. Um, I recently read that and verified it. And, and he, he kind of like redacted a little bit after he said it. But the point is, is that there's this influence in, in churchianity sometimes to avoid the Old Testament. Absolutely. And you were one that was such a, a bright light of that. Like mm-hmm. I, we, not only did I have him for a teacher, but at this school that we went to every morning, we had chapel. Yep. 
and it was basically a sermon. Absolutely. Every yeah, single, every, I mean, we had, uh, you know, five church services every, yep. every, every, every week. And um, a lot of the times the faculty wouldn't fill in, to be honest with you, faculty were our, like our, our saving grace. We're like, oh, thank God. <laughs> Because, you know, uh, there were some strange ones uh, yeah. sometimes. Um, oh, man. Yeah, yeah, not in the later years, but early years. Yes. So um, you always kept that influence. And I knew that whenever you were speaking in chapel, that if you had the Gideon Bible that only had, you know what I mean, just <laughs> the New Testament. That wasn't going to work. It wasn't going to work, man. You weren't going to make it. <laughs> Unless we were doing Psalms, that yeah, was exactly. not going to work. And I think you so. avoided the Psalms on purpose. <laughs> yes. Well, not not always. But, yeah. yeah. But absolutely. Yeah. So I, I thank you for that influence, and that's kind of why I, when I knew you were coming here today that I wanted to take that influence in my life and share it back because we know that we're not supposed to unhitch from yeah. the Old Testament. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? That That's actually the exact opposite of, of what we're supposed to yeah. do. We, we, are, we are hitched to it. Um, and uh, what I wanted to get a little bit for you is this thing is all about story. I say this every time. You know, this is, is God tell me that my story has worth and value. Yep. Yep. Um, and yep. a lot of times what we go through in life, um, our trials are some of the biggest sharing moments of, of revealing what God's doing in our life. And then yep. also what we can share to help with others. So I want to get, give me a good like backstory, you know, quick backstory on you, your life, wh where you come from. But then I want to, I want to lead up to the college because I talk about uh, Clearwater Christian college a lot and we did have the closing of it. And when it closed, it was a traumatic experience for, for everybody. Sure it was. And and for you, who was in the the heart of it, um, I, I know that, that that was traumatic. So so what I what I want to do is 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 hear a little bit about that. But first tell me a little bit about your story. Lead me up to Clearwater and then, then we'll go over to that. Okay. Well, um, my background um, is in the arts. So uh, visual arts, photographer for several years. Uh, graphic designer. I uh, worked for a major utility company in the Midwest, and uh, my wife and I both were professionals. We didn't have children um, for the first 10 years of our marriage, and uh, I began to advance in this utility company, and uh, I really had a burning in my heart to do something beyond slug it out in the public square every day, mm. And uh, it wasn't that there's was anything wrong with that. I just I just Felt wanted different something call. different. Yeah. And uh, so my wife and I both began to really just start praying about what to do. And uh, we didn't have a lot of the entanglements that other people have at the age we were. Um, not kids. having kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, I've reflected on that a lot. Like, what have I taken this path had I had kids? And the answer is probably no, I wouldn't yeah. have been strong enough yeah. to do that. And, uh, uh, so my wife and I sold her house, moved to Philadelphia and started training for ministry. And, uh, my passion for teaching started in a Bible Institute at that church that we were attending. And that church, uh, asked me to teach and I was teaching all kinds of things, New Testament, theology, Old Testament. And, I came to realize this is it, you know, and I was really struggling to try that was to the figure. juice. Yeah. yeah. I, I figured I was like trying to figure out, should I pastor? Should I go into mission? Should I teach? I don't know. And when I got dropped in these Bible Institute classes, it was like, okay, this is it. Yeah. And uh, so I stayed past my master of divinity for a master in theology in old Testament. And that's really where I began to, um, just find a love for the Old Testament. And it was because of a professor that I had there, you know, so it kind of comes full circle. Yeah. Uh, and this professor, Westminster PhD, um, dissertation in Song of Songs, one of the most difficult Old Testament books, really, Yeah. for hermeneutics. Yeah. And uh, he really gave me this passion for the Old Testament and just brought it to life for me. You know, the cultural, um, the cosmo the cosmology, the cosmogony, all those things just really came through him. And what you got at Clearwater was really him investing in me and me investing in you. Yeah. And and, and if, if if there's anybody that God uses in my life right now, it's just it's reciprocating, yeah. man. And that's that's uh, I hope so. That's beautiful. I hope so. And, so so we, uh, we were at seminary, and uh, a job came up at Clearwater. And uh, so I interviewed for it, and uh, 
and got it. Actually, I came to Clearwater as the Christian service director. Okay. And uh, that was a hard, really a hard position for me because I was a conservative evangelical, but not really a fundamentalist, you know, and that school was at that time very fundamental. They put the they put the fun and <laughs> fundamental. Yeah, they <laughs> definitely did. So, uh, you know, the struggle for me in that position was to try not to um, dampen students' faith because they were made to go to certain churches and things. And uh, so I was trying to just come alongside them and be an encouragement and try to get them on down the road in their faith in spite of some of the restrictions that were placed on them Yeah, in there. And then I ended up in the Bible department, and we had such a great Bible staff there um, just as you know, uh, what year did you start at Clearwater? Oh, three. I started at oh three. And wow, then, so you were there like literally like one year before me. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I, I never a, knew that till right now. I'm sorry. Too. <laughs> I was early in my teaching. <laughs> no, stop it. No. <laughs> Perfectly timed. Uh, so, so anyway, I was, uh, I was there and then, uh, one of our Bible faculty left, um, which was a really good friend of mine, Jeff Capshaw and you interviewed Nate Love uh, Jeff. Yeah. He'll be on here someday. I hope so. He will be. I hope so. He yeah. has a lot to contribute. Yeah. But uh, Jeff and I were, our families hung out a lot, and uh, and we had some great experiences there while he worked there. And But then when he left, I moved into the Bible faculty full-time and yeah. picked up some of the courses he was teaching, like Biblical Introduction to the Old Testament. Mm. So, so uh, pause there, talking about Jeff and his departure. Uh, because I think this is a critical moment in the story of talking about like the closing of the college. Mm. Um, when I f- was going to that to, to the school, I had had very little uh, experience with Jesus before that. Well, it was Southern Baptist Church, you know, yeah. uh, hellfire and brimstone, and and be on the watch for the rapture at any given moment. Yeah, yeah. And that was just like that was like that was the, that was what it was to me. And I came in and had a class with with Mr. Capshaw with Jeff. I mean, I think it was like day three that, you know, he was like, he was, you know, having me, you know, question and, and not telling me one way or the other, but telling me like, you should question this and you yeah. should look into it, that this yeah. is a very new thing. And, and I was like, I walked away from that. I was like, wait a minute, there's a Christian that doesn't believe in the rapture. <laughs> and I, I went to my dorm that night and this was early in the year. Like I said, day three. Right. And I called my pastor. And I was like, you're never going to believe this. Like, there's a dude here. And because he was the one, my pastor was the one who influenced me to come to Clearwater. And he, uh, um, he was like, he was, he was pissed. He was upset. I could tell. And, you know, I know he, he probably called the school. And I, I you know, whatever. I don't feel guilt for that because I was just young, dumb, and didn't really understand sure. anything. And, yeah, like, I respect and want his voice to be heard more than anybody's. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, that moment transpired and then you go into what I, what I wanted to bring up was fizz feud oh <laughs> okay because that, that was that fizz feud happened and we're going to give some context to this but fizz feud happened or am i am, i'm almost certain like right along the same time that he left or he, that he that he got asked to leave he was he, he was still at clearwater i think during yeah. that time but what i yeah. mean is like but it was close, close. Yeah. like yeah, i yeah. feel like i just like yeah, yeah. So, you know, this is where we talk about fundamental, and this is where some of the things that this project stands firmly against. Uh, Fizz Feud was a summer program that, that somebody put through to the college. Maybe you could speak to it a little bit. Yeah, I don't remember the people who were involved, but basically it was an evangelistic program that was kind of adapted for the college setting. And uh, it was teams that compete against each other in both games and other things. Uh, the preaching... Um, was um, very, I would say, manipulative. Yeah, you know, in in the way that it projects the gospel. Yeah, and how we live out the gospel, and how you know we would understand the gospel to be present in our world, and how grace exists, and all of those things. And so, uh, you know, there were ma- there were major things that happened during that week, as you well know, and. Yeah. Uh, um, I'm sure it was damaging to some and, um, but I would say, you know, there are people that came to Christ that week too. I mean, I, I can think of two people that came to me 
during that week and yeah. talked about surrendering their life to Christ and their vibrant Christians today. And so yeah. God uses all things, yeah. man. Yeah. I mean, in, yeah. the, in the it middle all, yeah. of something that, you know, I would probably suggest is theologically unsound. Um, you know, you, he's you still know, working. God used the donkey, man. Yeah. So, I yeah. Mean, he, I, can, he can use my you know, life as a testament of that. So. The very church that I told you that yeah. I came from, I mean, that was, you know, I look back on, on that and like, again, like, would I want to darken that door and, and, and hear that type of preaching again? No, but guess what? That's where God revealed yes. himself to me in. Right. 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 So yeah, yeah, you know, it's, 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 it's yeah. always pointing back to it. Lawrence O'Donnell, remember him? Yep. Yes, absolutely. He was uh, he was one that stood up in that moment of uh, yep. during Fizz Feud, and for me, again, impressionable, new Christian, uh, taking it all in, understanding it. That was so formative for me to see somebody be like, um, yeah. no, right, you know, and 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 stand up respectfully. You know what I mean? He was, it, it, you know, I could definitely learn a few things from him still. Yeah. And uh, a lot he, of courage. Yeah, a lot of courage. And I remember him standing up in one of those talks wearing a shirt that had a KAP. <laughs> yes. And then uh, the Greek word. Um, it, did it say in Greek cap daddy? Either way, it was I a think, sh- yeah, yeah, yeah. It was cap daddy, yeah, which yeah. is an a, a endearing name for Jeff Capshaw, our teacher, who was kind of being forcibly removed yeah. at that time. So that just gives yeah. a good uh, context story into sometimes, you know, what happens inside a fundamental college because there were a couple of people that came to Christ, but it was, yeah. a, a, if I didn't have somebody like Lawrence during that time, it was kind of a traumatic thing because there were people telling me, you know, that, you know, that, you know, if I didn't burn certain things in a fire that yeah. God was going to be angry with me and not hear my prayers right. and, and yeah. a lot of things that if you didn't have somebody. It was definitely an external checkbox, you know, yeah. that yeah. they perceived was um indicative of an internal change that was happening in your life and yeah. you know that's not necessarily the way that happens well god uses so. all things because that was still a moment for me that that i remember that actually was like good because now i yeah. i know that like you know you can yeah i mean you can I, have a different opinion yeah and <laughs> you know I, you know i guess without kind of naming names in my own life there's there's an individual that um has a strong diverging theological opinion from mine, but I, I really re- admire and respect him because the guy is a soul winner. Like yeah. he, everywhere he goes, man, he's talking about Jesus and what Jesus did for him. And yeah. it doesn't matter if it's the waitress. It doesn't matter if it's the person checked out. It doesn't matter. It's yeah. like the guy. You respect the, the hustle. It, I you know? do. Yeah. I, yeah. I respect yeah. the fact that yeah. his faith is so integrated that it becomes just this, who he is. And, and, yeah. It's not on a bookshelf. Um, yeah, and whether you disagree, and I think that's the bigger thing about the church, right, is that, you know, even if you disagree with, you know, certain manifestations of the church and and maybe even become judgmental about those, um, God's still working in that corner. It's still his church. Yeah. And, you know, none of us are white perfect, you know, white washed and perfect um, the way we express ourselves inside of a local church and and. I think sometimes that's that's just a good thing for us all to kind of step back and say, you know, we could think of ourselves as the Pharisee and the, you know, and the prostitute that we have less sins than her, so God loves me more, and that's not the case, right? Yeah. And it's just a good reminder for me. You know? Yeah. No, I I I love that. So connecting it back to the story of what we were talking about that was a a, a, a good rabbit trail i think yeah. with, with, with that so uh then jeff jeff capshaw was was removed from the college and then you know now we're tracking in your story yeah so and i'd let him kind of define that he'll come on your show yeah exactly we're not how that, yeah, how that but, happened but yeah we're moving but towards yeah, what so, happened when the close of the college so uh yeah so he left and uh you know, that was a pretty big loss for our Bible department, I think, because he was so, um, he was just so good. And you know this from being with him in the classroom. He was just so good at command of the classroom to make learning happen. Yeah. And I mean, it was a clinic. You yeah. know, when you'd go in there, you better be prepared and uh, be ready to be ready to go because he was, he was good yeah. in that way. And uh, then the college moved towards closing in 2015 and, um, you know, that's, uh, I think it was progressing. We had a new president and, uh, within two years of him coming, uh, 
the board decided to close, you know, and everybody's responsible for their actions and their choices, but that's what they chose to do. And, um, and you know, would that have been what you chose? Oh, absolutely not. Yeah. Absolutely not. Yeah. I mean, you know, you're a business guy. Do you close a business when you got money in the bank and all your bills are paid and, you know, no. there you go. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's business one oh one, right? Yeah. So, uh, but you know, I guess the other side of me looks at what's going on in Christian education. Cause I'm still in it. Yeah. And you know, we're in this time frame that's called the enrollment cliff. That's when millennials decided not to have babies, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you don't have babies, you don't have college students. Right. Yeah. So, uh, we're in the middle of that. It's a, that's a very tough time for, for Christian colleges because yeah. the weakness I think of the church to um, really advance college and promote Christian education and the value of it because there is a value add and you have to actually promote that value Amen. add. Yeah. So, so when you don't and you know and you you know promote University of Florida from the stage or some other college, then you know you kind of lose that pastoral influence to push students to consider. Uh, Christian education and mm. and so would have Clearwater made it even if the board hadn't made that choice I don't know you yeah know? I mean it's a it's really a tough landscape right now because the influencers aren't influencing you know as they have historically done and uh, it's really an economic decision more than a valued or principled decision at this point you know in the progress of our nation so yeah and I think that's a great uh, um, like just analysis of like Christian education, the problems that we're facing and, and what might have befall, like befallen the college. Yeah. But the truth is that's an overarching scale. And then there's a lot of people in their lives that are wrapped up into those things. And, and then when it happens, it hurts. Oh, absolutely. So like I was uh, not even <clears throat> at the college at the time that it closed. And I remember weeping. Yep multiple days uh you know what i mean that 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 it, that it hurt so and i know that that it hurt you as well and what what i would love to hear about is a little bit of your transition through that yeah. that journey of of uh of seeing god through pain and and yeah yeah i mean i i'll share a little bit about that um there was multiple things going on inside of my personal world you know and i every every staff member has their story you know that's was at clearwater yeah my own story was my wife had already been laid off the December before it closed. So really for the first time in our life, we're both sitting on the couch looking for a job with no income and wow. three kids. And, um, God showed up in those moments. I mean, uh, things like my son was at Calvary Christian high school. And, uh, I remember walking in Mr. Kilgore's office at, at Calvary and just saying, look, you know, my wife's out of a job. I don't have a job. There's no way my son can come back here unless you intervene. And uh, he was like, you know, of course, we'll do it. And Wow. Uh, you know, Calvary's not cheap. No. You know, it's a it's a pretty <laughs> high-level Christian yeah. high school. And yeah. uh, they basically let him come there for nothing. Wow. You know, for, Praise that, God. for that year. And, you know, there are all kinds of people that, really just showed up and reaffirmed, you know, God's presence in our life. And some of them were believers and some of them weren't. Yeah. And um, St. Petersburg College reached out to me and they were incensed, enraged that they would do that to the faculty. And they offered me a, a adjunct position and gave me four classes for that fall. Wow. And they said, we never do this. We never give an ad, a new adjunct four classes. We want to evaluate them, give them one, evaluate them, and we're going to give you four because we're just so, we just think what happened is so egregious. Wow. And, uh, you know, these are, this guy in the interview was like, I'm an atheist. Is that going to be a problem for you? And I'm like, I'm a Christian. Is that going to be a problem for you? Wow. <laughs> and we laughed about it. But, yeah. you know, this is a guy who was an atheist in St. Petersburg College that was my department chair. And he's so incensed about what happened at Clearwater that he wanted to help. Yeah. And when you see, when you see 
at the foundation of everything that there's a God that loves you and is in control of all things. Yeah. You can know that a conversation from an atheist can give you more hope sometimes than the conversation of a Christian college board. Yeah. It's, it, it was pretty amazing during that time. And, it, you know, and there was a lot of pain. I mean, yep, you know, we're talking about some of the high level things. Yeah. Um, you know, we had an administration that felt in some ways um, responsible for this, for the faculty and for the mm. students yeah. and to constantly Shepherds. hear those stories about how they'd been damaged and hurt um, was hard. You know, to, you'd visit a church and a dad would walk up to you and say, my daughter's got an extra year in college now and it's an extra $20,000 and I don't know how we're going to pay for it, but we're going to do it. And it's yeah. you know, because. So it wasn't something that just like came in and came out. You had to kind of almost like it, it, it just like was a. Yeah. You lived in it. Yeah. I mean, you lived in it for a good year, two years. And yeah. the, I guess the upside just to bring some lightness to it is it's a good weight loss program. <laughs> I lost like 50 pounds through yeah. the whole thing. So, See, I'm the reverse. Uh, I'm an yeah. eater. I'm an eater in those moments. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I was doing a lot of walking in Starkey park and inside uh, of my own head, you know, yeah. during those times. And it was good. You know, I mean, I was, I was really, um, deconstructing what happened and I was really trying to, you know, uh, keep my family close to the Lord during those times. And, I mean, you can lose your kids pretty quickly in the midst of struggle. those type of struggles and yeah. those dark moments, you know. And uh, it was really the Lord helping us to know what to talk about and be transparent and what not to talk about and, you know, kind of keep to ourselves and between me and my wife. and They don't have uh, to wear all the worries. Yeah, I didn't want that yeah. on them. But I did want them to know what's going on, you know, and uh, and really understand that. So, so how did you find your way out? Uh, I'm not sure I've found my way out, you know? Yeah. I mean, it, you know, I really, um, uh, took some time to really strip away a lot of, uh, not really strip away, but reassess a lot of what, um, I valued inside of the church and inside of Christianity and, you know, all those things. And, and I think it was helpful for me, you know, to, to, as you said, think about, okay, how does God love, not just the statement, God loves me, but think about in what ways can I be reaffirmed that that is true, Yeah, you know, and uh, I didn't start looking for the big things because it was pretty clear early on that, you know, the, the Red Sea moment wasn't going to happen, you know, it was going to be a ditch digging job for a 50 year old guy to, you know, find his place in education. Yeah. And uh, so I just started looking for the little things, like the department chair, you know. Um, here's a guy who doesn't care one bit about Christianity and doesn't believe it's true, but yet he sees a guy that's the absolute opposite of him in the belief about the ultimate things, and he's willing to, and he's compelled to help, yeah. you know, and... How, how can you say that's anything but yeah, God? You know? he's, fulfi so. he's fulfilling he's fulfilling the greatest commandment. You're right. Yeah. Right. And, you know, just his care and concern and looking out for me and, you know, um, grace that he was showing me. It's like, you know, it was God really showing me, hey, I'm here, man. Yeah. I'm I'm, I'm in the midst of this. And, wow. Uh, I could tell you all kinds of stories like that. Yeah, you know, that, that kept you going. That was just um, interesting encounters with people in the most obscure places because I would do things like take my kids to school and go sit on the beach and think about my life, you know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, people walk up and just start talking to you. And, yeah. Um, it's like, wow, that's God yeah. right there, <laughs> you know. I'm finding out that is so true. I'm finding out even with this project, I'll have it set up to go interview somebody. And inevitably, like I meet the, the, the real moments that kind of happen sometimes are like the people that I meet randomly in the parking yeah. lot or, or, you know, yeah. like I could sit down and try to study through these books all day. But sometimes when I get up and I go on my one wheel and I do a cruise around through a trail, all of a sudden that's when the breakthrough happens. Right. Yeah. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? It, yep. It's 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 a it's a picture of the fact that, that he's present 
and then actively engaged in your life and, and from somebody who sat under you and somebody who experienced like the pain that you went through afterwards, I just want to say thank you mm. because what you did at that college just for me personally meant so much. And that's what we're going to go into here today because you gave me so you gave me community at a time that was very precious and needed for me. But then you also gave me the ability and power to stand through some really tough trials. Hmm. Um, and, and I think the work that you did at that college, you'll never like, that's the beauty of it that I always talk about. Like when you plant something for God's kingdom, it grows on the other side and you're never going to see it. Yeah. Right. I mean, you do, you've got all these breadcrumbs, but you know what I mean? Like all these things that, that you've done through that college, and are continuing to do, are are going to bring a, a a plentiful harvest, and I'm so thankful for you, Anthony, uh -huh. and all that you've given to me in my life, and 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 what you endured through all that, like, man, I I love you. Yeah, well, thank you. I mean, I, I love you and all the students, man. I mean, it's just I'm just so encouraged by that. Earlier in chapel at Trinity College of Florida, um, Anthony DeRossi spoke this week. Okay. And, uh, you know, he's a former student. He came after you yeah. and, uh, he's pastoring in the local area now. And, uh, just hearing him preach, man, I was just like taking it in and it was yeah. like, that's marvelous. You know, yeah. I was just walked out of there so full, yeah. you know, because, you know, not because he was preaching something he's went on to seminary and he's way past, you know, where we were at at Clearwater, but yeah. just, just knowing that, um, you know, some little speck, on his spectrum was, was interaction with me. And, and, you know, and my heart was just full to see him serving the Lord. And, uh, you know, and another one's Riley Lester. He's up at East Lake, Calvary East Lake now and Clearwater grad, you know, and so you're right. I mean, they're, they're everywhere. And, um, it's just encouraging to see them out there, see you out here doing this and see them out there doing their thing. And, uh, just see how God's working in their life and letting them participate in the kingdom. Yeah, it's all connected. Yeah, absolutely. It's all connected. And yeah. I, I keep coming back to that and I keep seeing it. And, um, you know, that's it's the flow that you're entered into when you tap into to what God is doing through Jesus in our world. Yeah. All of a sudden you realize that it's just, it's you're connected. One of the things it's all that um, was an important event that happened during the post Clearwater Christian College closure um, was something that my wife did that really ties into this conversation. When there was those dark moments in my life after Clearwater closed, um, one of the most encouraging moments in my world uh, was sitting on my back lanai or laying in my bed um, and my, and my wife knew I was in a dark place. Mm -hmm. And she could have done a hundred things to make me feel better, right? Said something very, really encouraging. Tell me she loves me, whatever. Um, but she did something different. Um, and what she did was she would walk in the room, open scripture, and just start reading it. Close it and walk out. Mm. And... What scripture can do in those moments when it's left by itself, apart from human encouragement, apart from some type of interpretation and admonition, just letting scripture lay on a hurting heart is phenomenal. Amen. You know, yeah. and, and that brings us back to what's the function and purpose of scripture in our lives? right? Yeah. It's, it's God's word to us um, to give us direction, give us purpose, show, him, show us his character, show us how he's working in this world to redeem it and fix what has been damaged either by ourselves or by other people, um, not by our own making. I love that, man. Thank you so much for sharing that. And like that, is so encouraging, right? To the person that doesn't have a Bible degree, yeah. To the person that doesn't have the lexicon on their shelf, 
And, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are, that are intimidated mm -hmm. and for them to know that it can be an anchor just by it, just being there. Right. You know, uh, and, and sitting with it and what a testament to your wife, man, that is, that's a, that's a, a beautiful yeah. nugget that I really appreciate you sharing. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to, because, um, you know, that, that's really the power of scripture. Yeah. You know, when you're doubting where is God or what, what's going on in my life? What are you actually doing in my world? God. Yeah. Um, to hear just the words of scripture, um, that the Holy Spirit is using through her to choose that passage. I'm not choosing anything. I'm just laying there in my own world. Yeah. And, you know, that kind of brings us full circle, you know, that the Holy Spirit's guided writers to write and, and inscripturate uh, passages, thoughts, words, ideas that convey truth. And then in 20... 15, 16, 17, somebody who's indwelled by the Holy Spirit chooses what passages need to be heard by somebody else. If we can offer any encouragement to people out there that are listening is to, to not be afraid to lean in to the resources that are out there, sure. uh, to, to, to delve further, to dive further into it, because it's, it's a journey that will rock you sock you and, 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 and hit you in so many ways, but oh, is it beautiful? And oh, is it give you hope when you're hopeless and your wife comes in and just sets the book down and, and it does all of these things that anchor us. So, you know, uh, I, I just want to close the saying, thank you. Thank you for confirming mm. all the things. Thank you for coming along this journey with me yeah. through the, through this. And, and, uh, thank you for being a light in my life. Uh, past and present and future, because I know this isn't the last time I'll see you in here. Yeah, absolutely. Look yeah. forward to it next time. All right, man. Thanks, All Tony. Right. All right. We are out. Mm -hmm.